Imagine a world hundreds of light years away, a planet shrouded in a thick atmosphere with a vast ocean of liquid water, and perhaps with life. The James Webb Space Telescope recently explored just such a world, exoplanet K218b, and its new data contains something astonishing, a hint of molecules that, here on Earth, are a sure sign of biological activity. Could we be seeing the first real evidence of life beyond Earth? K218b isn't just a random speck in the sky that Webb is looking at. Discovered in 2015 by the Kepler Space Telescope, this exoplanet is located about 124 light years away and orbits a red dwarf star. What makes it so special for the search for life? It falls within its star's so-called habitable zone, the region where temperatures could theoretically allow liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. But K218b isn't an exact twin of Earth. It's about eight times more massive than our planet and is classified as a sub-Neptune. At the same time, data hints that it could be what's called a Haitian world. Imagine a planet covered in a giant ocean of liquid water, but not with our familiar nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. Instead, it would have a very thick, hydrogen-rich envelope, like gas giants. This is a completely new, still hypothetical type of planet that, according to scientists' calculations, could be quite promising for the origin and sustenance of life. And it's exactly this potential habitability, combined with its unusual type, that made K218b a prime target for the most powerful atmosphere hunter, the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists pointed its gaze at this planet in search of not just common gases, but specific molecules that could hold the key to unlocking the main question, is there life there? But how can Webb see the atmosphere of such a distant world? It uses a method called transit spectroscopy. When the planet K218b passes directly in front of its star, some of the starlight passes through the thin layer of its atmosphere before reaching our telescopes. Different chemical elements and molecules in this atmosphere absorb light at specific wavelengths unique to them. Webb acts like a highly sensitive fingerprint scanner, analyzing this weakened and altered light to understand which gases are present in the planet's atmosphere and in what quantities. Webb's first observations of K218b, published in 2023, were made in the near-infrared range. They already yielded exciting results, confirming the presence of hydrogen in the atmosphere and clearly detecting traces of methane and carbon dioxide. These gases were consistent with models of a Hycean world. But hidden within this data was a faint, inconclusive hint of something far more intriguing the possible presence of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short. On Earth, DMS is almost exclusively produced by microorganisms, primarily phytoplankton in the oceans. This news immediately sparked a wave of speculation. Could this be the first, albeit tentative, signal of life beyond Earth? But was this faint hint real evidence of biological activity, or just measurement error? or something completely different that we don't yet understand? To resolve the doubts, Webb conducted new, more detailed observations. And now, the results are in. What do they tell us about the chances of finding life on K218b? This time, Webb used a different instrument, MIRI, which operates in the mid-infrared range. This wavelength range is ideally suited for searching for more complex organic molecules in the atmospheres of distant planets. And the new data, soon to be published in a prestigious astrophysical journal, turned out to be much more convincing than the previous tentative hints. Scientists led by Professor Niku Madhusudan from Cambridge University detected clear signs of the presence of two key molecules in K218b's atmosphere the already familiar dimethyl sulfide, DMS, and its close relative, dimethyl disulfide, DMDS. The signal of their presence was detected with a statistical significance level of three sigma. That's a threshold that, in science, is considered a serious basis for claiming a detection. Why is this so important? On Earth, 
both DMS and DMDS are in the vast majority of cases products of the life activity of microorganisms, the very ones that inhabit our oceans or soil. This has made them key candidates for the role of biosignatures, molecular markers that can indicate the presence of life when searching beyond the solar system. But what's even more astonishing, the new data indicate an extremely high concentration of one or both of these molecules in K218b's atmosphere, possibly tens or even hundreds of times higher than what we see on Earth. But does this astonishing discovery automatically mean that there is definitely life on K218b? Scientists are not rushing to such definitive conclusions yet. The new detection, for all its importance, also raises fundamental questions that must be resolved before claiming life has been found. Why did these potential biosignatures appear there in such incredible quantities? Could there be some completely unknown, non-biological, abiotic processes capable of producing DMS or DMDS? Especially in the exotic conditions of a high sean world, a hydrogen atmosphere over a water ocean, conditions not found on Earth? And how can we reliably distinguish a true biosignature from a false alarm caused by the unique, currently not understood chemistry of this distant planet, or even the characteristics of the star itself? Furthermore, current web data doesn't yet allow scientists to definitively distinguish which molecule, DMS or DMDS, predominates in K218b's atmosphere, or if both are present together. This is another important uncertainty that needs to be resolved. And this is where the main challenge arises. How, having only this spectral data, can we confidently claim life exists hundreds of light years away? Can the most sophisticated models of non-biological processes on this planet completely and unequivocally rule out the possibility of these molecules forming without the involvement of living organisms? Or are we truly seeing the first, albeit indirect, signal of extraterrestrial life. So, Webb saw a significant amount of DMS and DMDS in K218b's atmosphere, molecules most closely linked to life on Earth. But how are scientists trying to answer those sharp questions we posed? Could this be non-biological chemistry? And how do we distinguish one from the other? Finding a definitive answer to these questions is a task of incredible complexity like a planetary scale detective story. Scientists worldwide are now putting all their effort into creating and analyzing sophisticated computer models. These models attempt to recreate all possible physical and chemical processes that could occur in K218b's atmosphere and hypothetical ocean. They account for atmospheric composition, temperature, pressure, stellar radiation, everything that influences the chemistry. The goal? to figure out if the entire set of detected gases, including methane, carbon dioxide, and especially the high concentrations of DMS and DMDS, could arise naturally without the involvement of living organisms. And this is where the models run into serious difficulties. The main challenge lies in trying to find a convincing abiotic, meaning non-biological, explanation for the presence of DMS and DMDS, especially in the enormous quantities that Webb observed. In the exotic conditions we assume for a Hycean world, known non-biological chemical processes either wouldn't produce these molecules at all or would break them down too quickly, preventing them from accumulating to the observed levels. The high concentration detected by Webb, possibly tens or hundreds of times higher than Earth's, makes the scenario of random or slow non-biological accumulation of these gases extremely unlikely. This isn't just a hint. It's a powerful signal. And here we arrive at the heart of the discovery, the main wow. Imagine finding a complex, precisely ticking clock mechanism in a completely deserted wilderness. Theoretically, it could have appeared randomly as a result of thousands of rare natural coincidences. But the most logical and simplest explanation is that someone created it. It's the same here. Although scientists cannot yet completely rule out the existence of abiotic processes on K218b that are currently unknown to us, they are actively searching for such possibilities. Current scientific models indicate that the timed ADB, natural, non-biological formation of DMS and DMDS in the quantities observed by Webb, 
appears extremely, extremely unlikely. In light of all current data and the immense difficulties in constructing convincing non-biological models, the simplest, most elegant, and currently the most viable scientific explanation for the high content of DMS and DMDS in K218b's atmosphere remains a biological origin. That is, the production of these molecules by living organisms, possibly inhabiting the hypothetical ocean of this distant planet. All this work is aimed at one thing, either finding a convincing abiotic explanation or confirming the biological hypothesis with even greater confidence. As of today, the data speaks loudest. The biological origin of DMS and DMDS is the most probable scenario. We can't shout, life found, that wouldn't be scientific. But K218b, with its high sea in nature and these astonishing molecules, has become the most promising candidate for the title of the first world where we might have seen real traces of extraterrestrial life. The search continues. And every new observation by Webb brings us closer to answering the question, are we alone in the universe?